All over the world and here in Ireland, there are groups that subscribe to an unusual philosophy broadly known as that of the free men. They are not a single homogenous group, but are linked by ideas such as claiming that the individual is sovereign and that laws don't apply to you unless you consent to them. That sort of ideology is now being used by groups here claiming to have a way out for those in crisis debt. But is it, as it sounds, too good to be true? Rita O'Reilly reports. In troubled times, a fringe political ideology has spread to several countries. Its supporters believe they are sovereign individuals answerable only to God. Wielding their own version of law, they say state law only applies if they consent to it. And they believe that money is created out of nothing, so that affects how people should deal with debt. Born in the USA, the Freeman philosophy is a recent Irish import. Latching onto the Irish debt crisis, its populist approach has struck current and historical chords, appealing even to those who don't ascribe to it. The whole world is in crisis. There is only one common denominator, and that is the banking system. We're all sovereign, and they have to prove we're not. See, I just say I'm one of the people. That means I'm sovereign. When someone is drowning, you know, if you tell them that a stone will float, they might grab it. Primetime went to find how thinking that can be traced to the free man is being used here now. It led us to odd places and to a scheme some, desperate with debt, are willing to gamble on. There's only one bank, one property going in, and it's still one person. Did you know that statutes only apply to you when you consent to them? Acts and statutes were created by men, and therefore lower than God's slash natural law. On the net, we found this animation. It's from what's called the Irish Freeman Guide. Also on the net, one name kept cropping up. Me, the spy election candidate Ben Gilroy. Half a million have viewed his exchanges with a deputy sheriff. That order is signed by the sheriff. Yeah. Right, so he's making his own orders as a private company to come and take no. homes. Look at This is fully you. legal. Okay? Not, it's not, what? Not. If you want to go to the courts and contest the order, you're more than free to do oh, it. Hold on, but the, the, the register. The ruling of the court may be legal because legal has to do with acts and statutes, but it's not lawful. It sounds quite on prime time last March, Mr. Gilroy denied that he ascribed to free man thinking. And you've also been associated with the free man movement. Are you linked no, to that? No, I mean, that's nonsense that you hear on, on, the, on the internet. But on the net, there's a lot to suggest he applies its core thinking and tactics. Did you know that the courts in Ireland operate under Admiralty Maritime Law Jurisdiction, which literally means the law of the sea? They're maritime courts. They're of the sea. That's why you have the master of the high court. He's the master of the ship. That's why you're in the dock. We asked Mr. Gilroy what all this meant. I don't ever remember mentioning maritime courts. That wouldn't be from me. I believe that somebody said I said it in a magazine, but I made no reference to maritime courts. How would I? Freeman believe that when it comes to civil matters, police are just policy enforcers for the commercial courts. We don't have policy enforcers in this country because the guards don't know their job. They think when a judge gives an order, they have to do it. I've never been involved in any politics before, any free man movement, any of that nonsense. I actually think most of it's nonsense, to be honest. Well, what I said was I wasn't a member of the free man movement that I was accused of. But, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater either. They have some, some good theories as well. And basically, they just want to be left alone, is my understanding. But, you know, they don't recognize governments or politics or courts or any of that sort of stuff. And that's certainly not where I'm at. Wexford businessman Francis Cullen, a bankrupt, invoked Freeman language when he refused to deal with the official bankruptcy assignee. In May, the courts lost patience. Cullen was jailed for contempt. Interesting that it's lay people and new members, as I call them, being used to spout this uh, nonsense in a court or now recognise a court, thus exposing themselves personally. Francis Cullen is still in Mount Joy. In affidavits, he had trademarked his own name, another recognised free man tactic. Ben Gilroy had done that too. One website where he and others have trademarked their names is owned by him. It charges €250 Euro a year. He says it's to keep debt collectors away. 
I found it necessary to trademark my name. And what I do is I charge them 50,000 euros every time they use my name. And it has turned out that it's an actual uh, parasite protection cream, if you like. It's a fabulous idea. We also asked Mr Gilroy about this poster on his door. My father left me a seal uh, many years ago, and it's of the ancient clan of Gilroy. Why are you invoking that on a notice posted on your door? Because, uh, do you understand about the legal entity and the natural person in law? Tell us. Okay, well, there's a natural person in law and a legal person in law. And you have to identify the two. Most people don't get it. This concept is hard to get your head around at first. A person is not a man or a woman. It is a legal entity similar to a corporation. The person is also known as a legal entity, a straw man, a fictional entity, and a trade name. A recent attempt to retake properties on a large Kildare stud farm brought the spotlight onto one scheme that uses Freeman tactics, the Rodolphus Allen Private Family Trust, led by Charlie Allen. <laughs> ben Gilroy was there. You'll see 300 sovereign, sovereign people uh, exercising their sovereignty today, and it was great to see because it was very empowering. It really was a fabulous day. And remember, we had only 24 hours to organise this. But any scrutiny of the Rodolphus Allen Trust has just raised questions. A mortgage specialist went to one of its meetings on behalf of a client. I was pretty unimpressed with the presentation in terms of what they said was the way that it worked because they wouldn't reveal anything. It's all aspirational, there's no mention of any laws. But one important fact is that it says at one point that you state there is no lien or encumbrance on your property. A mortgage by definition is a loan secured by the first lien on a property. The owner of the stud along with Charlie Allen and Ben Gilroy had bench warrants issued against them for breach of a court order granting repossession of the properties. They've yet to appear before the court. Behind media focus on the Allen Trust, though, another group has been quietly signing people up. Debt Options Ireland publicly says it's about empowering lay litigants to sue the banks pursuing them for debt. Claire Cullinan, founder of Debt Options Ireland, is an image consultant, former actress and confidence coach who has appeared on RTE. Oh, well, you've given me wonderful raw material yeah, starters. I'm very much going to vote on a local level, and I'm very much going to vote on personalities. I used to train governments in stress management and creative thinking. The Maltese government had me back several times on this particular subject. Her group, Debt Options, is not to be confused with a separate bankruptcy advice service of the same name, run by a solicitor and an insolvency advisor. She agreed to an interview. We asked her what it was about. For some people, it's as simple as somebody reading their letters because they've become overwhelmed. And for other people, it's about helping them legally to follow through a process. Claire Cullinan's name is also trademarked and she invokes a core Freeman view, not of a sovereign people, but of sovereign individuals. The banks have taken our lives. They've got to pay according to our society and according to our constitution. Because our constitution empowers the individual in every way, shape and form. We are above the government, we are above the law, we are the law. But would you subscribe to their beliefs? I would say that the Freeman movement all over the world has educated an awful lot of people into waking up to who and what it is they are. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a member of them or, you know, in any way connected to them. Up front, the Debt Options Ireland solution is to sue the bank for €1 million, Euro, then consider stopping repayments while your case drags through the courts. But from the coalface of free legal advice, there is caution. People are being told there's an element of fraud on the bank side which allows them to stop making repayments. That has not been proved in this case. If people don't make repayments, they, they not only owe that money, they will owe additional penalties and interest as well. We were curious about debt options. We picked up concern about the advice on offer. We went to one of its meetings and secretly filmed it. We found it too was offering to set up a trust. Or to take the banks to court. Next, we're offering you a sheet, a huge big sheet, which is your family trust. The proposal was that in addition to the trust set up for them by debt options, borrowers would become shareholders in a company that would instruct a legal team in a big test case launched on October 14th. You cannot be taken to court if you are, you're bringing your same certificate, you're saying I'm part of this, I go this, blah, 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 right? And they can't go any further, they can't sell your property, they can't evict you, and everything stops. 
On the net, Debt Options maintains its service is free. We found it is not. Beyond court fees for taking your own case, Debt Options had a price. And now we get to the crude vulgarity of money, right? Money's what I was into this, money will get us back out of this. It's going to cost several hundred thousand euros to take this case. Now, what we are allowed in on this, if you like, for 200 euros up to the 14th of October. On the 15th of October, after we filed everything, Bury, uh, it's taken over by the legals and the price goes up to 500. There was no shortage of people willing to pay. <laughs> Investors paid an additional 100 euro per property folio on top of the 200. Anybody who's got commercial properties, it's 200 as a gift. This is a gift you're giving, right? And it's a gift because we are not going to be a tax to the Irish government. At that meeting, we saw cash changing hands. Yes, this is not free. No, debt options got in as a foundation level, at a foundation figure, and then yesterday the people of ERA take over. Are you getting any money out of it? At this moment in time, no. Up to the time that debt options lets go, no. Debt Options does advocate a legal approach. It's time for the people to stand up and come back in a legal, lawful and respectful way. And that approach has not yet been tested in the courts. No one can definitively say they have it wrong, but there are doubts. Rosa Fanning is a barrister who specialises in banking and insolvency. As a matter of legal theory, I think it's nonsense upon stilts. I don't think there's any sound or respectable legal basis for that strategy. But how do they know that if they haven't actually seen the book of evidence that we hold? We tried to find out more about what was involved in the debt options plan. Our first issue was who the public are being asked to place their trust in. Debt options advisors were introduced by first name only. Alex is a default solicitor, right? He's my greatest asset. Because he makes the balls and we can balls. He has no code of ethics, we have no code of ethics. This. So do you see the sheet now? Right? It is it's very helpful. It's extremely helpful. Please. And Alex has got to be given huge credit on this one. Can you identify that person? No. Again, it wouldn't be fair to him. But he is a defunct solicitor. He is somebody who is disbarred per se. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have something to offer. We identified him. He's Alexandra Gibbons of Gibbons & Co. Clonakilty struck off as a solicitor last year after being found guilty of eight counts of professional misconduct, including misappropriation of clients' money and fabricating documents. Mr Gibbons told Primetime he was involved in debt options in a voluntary capacity and that Primetime should not try to belittle people who are doing their best to help each other in any way they can. Last week, Debt Options lodged a plenary summons in what it says is its big test case, taken by a couple against Bank of Ireland. Again, we heard talk of the company that would instruct a legal team in the case. There is a company called the People of Vera. Everyone here is a member of that company. And this couple has been chosen out of all of them to come forward and be the representative case for those 1,000. But we figure that 1,000 will flow to a million very quickly. Where is it registered? In the CRO. And how many shareholders does it currently have? I actually don't know at this moment in time. And who are the directors? The directors are three people who've been involved with debt options up until now. And they are not giving out any names. Its new website has been launched, but the company's registration office told Primetime neither the People of Era nor any similar company has been registered or applied to register with it. At the debt options meeting we filmed, the audience was assured of success. Either long term, within six months, or even if the banks gave in by Christmas. Right, so by Christmas, we could be all sitting with our deeds back if they all came to the table and if they all agreed. Now, if they were bringing their heads, that's what they do. If you lose yes. these cases, including the test case, number what one, what will be the position then? 
number one, we won't lose them. These people themselves will lose them. They stand to be in a far worse position because they may suffer not just delay and the distress that goes with the delay, but also costs, legal costs. And they, they know this. Case. Every solitary per excuse me, every solitary person knows this and has been told this on the at the outset. You know, you can't take decisions for other people. And these people are making their decisions with all details on the table. There's nobody been hoodwinked in any way here. There's nothing in this for us. There is a real concern. We're dealing here with people who are in terrible debt. Some of them are in terrible distress as well as debt. And what they're being given is the equivalent of pub advice, pub legal advice. Um, they're not being given direct advice by a lawyer that they can identify, by a financial expert that they can identify. If you're at a point where you say, I'm so desperate, I'll just take a punt on this. It's only going to cost 500 euro. Well, then why would you do that, knowing that you're entering into something with questionable legality, why don't you just go buy 500 lottery tickets, bet on 500 horses? Last year, Debt Options used Ben Gilroy as its legal advisor and trainer. He told us he would try to be there for the lay litigants in the courts. His group, People for Economic Justice, describes Debt Options as its sister movement. You informed me of that yesterday, I didn't even know that was on it. But, but look, I do support all these people. Absolutely. If you ask me is she right or wrong, I don't know. But I admire the stance that a woman who has had her children grown up takes this stand for what our elected politicians maybe should be doing. You know, where are all they supporting the people, the very people who pay their wages? Where are they? Why is there a need for us? Ben Gilroy says he does not know much about either the Rodolphus Allen Trust or the Debt Options Trust. I'm unsure of the approach it has taken of recent times. I'm not privy to that. Um, so I, I really couldn't comment would be my fairest way to say it. Do you think it's it's worth it, though, their plan, their plan of suing the banks, uh, bringing a big test case, uh, why not? setting up private trusts and Absolutely. a company? Absolutely. Why not? Are you not just taking money off people and leading them on a road to nowhere? I'm direction? not leading anybody. What I'm doing is laying before them the facts that have been laid before me and the opportunity that has been laid before me. Whatever the value of free man thinking, a myriad of groups and individuals are taken by at least some of it. While the response of the courts so far for Freeman arguments has not been favourable, the continuing failure of banks to reach genuine debt deals is casting increasing numbers of the desperate into the arms of those claiming to offer hope. It's no real surprise that many people are, are interested in finding that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but realistically, I think everybody with a modicum of common sense knows there's no simple solution to the proposition that you borrowed money and you have a legal obligation to repay it. This is not Disneyland. This is Ireland. And people are under immense pressure and responsible people need to advise those people properly, safely and correctly in order to protect them, their families and their mental health and not mislead them into an area that's untried, untested and unproven. I guess if one day all the Freeman ideology proves to be true, then the world will have no place left for people like me, or any other professional for that matter. So I will uh, put on my anti-gravity boots, watch a few pigs fly past me and ride off into the sunset. Rita O'Reilly reporting. And anyone affected by debt can contact the following helplines. Uh, MABS is on 0761 07 2000.